Thanks for joining us today. We'd love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life. So we encourage you to share your story with us at info at fellowshipgj.com or by clicking the Share Your Story tab on the Church Center app. Also, if God is using this ministry to impact you, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially. And you can do that by clicking on the giving link located in the description below this video, online at fellowshipgj.com. Or if you're a member here at Fellowship Church, you can give through our Church Center app. This will help us continue to bring the message of Christ to our community and beyond. Again, thank you for joining us today and enjoy today's service. Good morning, church, and welcome. Would you please stand with us? Our God is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. You guys, I know that there are people in this room that the enemy has tried to throw distraction at you this week. He's tried to throw discouragement at you this week. He has tried to steal your joy, but not today. Not today. We choose joy. We choose to say that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And it doesn't matter what you're facing right now. If we proclaim, if we say in faith he is good, the situation is going to turn around. If it's not good, then he's not done yet. So come on, give him a shout of praise. Put your hands together and let's give him praise.
the Bible tells us that when two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in their midst. And so we know and have confidence that God is here, that the Holy Spirit is here. He hears our prayers. So let's talk to him together. God, there are so many needs represented in this room, and we're so grateful that you're here and that you care and that you're able to do something. And we invite you right now to give breakthroughs, heal hearts, do miracles on our behalf, God. We are thrilled to be in this room, and we're thrilled to be meeting with you, and we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Well, good morning, church family. If you would, turn and greet one another, and then make your way to your seats. If you're joining us online, we'd love to extend a very special welcome to you. Please come and join us in the room at a time in the near future. We would be thrilled to have you. But whenever you're live streaming from, feel free to put that in the comments. Or if you do have a prayer request, let us know and we'll pray for you about what you have going on in your life. We're just glad that you're joining us. If you consider yourself a guest or a visitor here at Fellowship, we are glad you're here. We invite you to let us know that you're with us with one of two things. Either stop by the information counter and simply let us know that you're a guest and they'll give you like a gift bag of stuff to help you get to know Fellowship a little bit more. And also they'll give you a gift card to go to the church bookstore and to receive a specialty coffee drink for you and everyone in your visiting party. And so we hope you'll take advantage of that. If you do not want um, to make yourself known face-to-face, -face, you can simply text 94000, text the word fellowship, and they will put you through a series of prompts that will connect you with one of our staff members who will invite you to an upcoming guest reception, and you can have your questions about the church answered that way. Either way, we're just glad that you're here this morning. If um, during the course of your time at fellowship, if you realize you're not progressing through the steps that we want everyone to progress through, if you're at the church, you are on a journey. Your first step is to connect. Connect with one another and connect with God. Your next step is to grow. That means growing in our faith. And if you realize somewhere in that you've kind of bogged down and you're not really growing, challenge you to stop by the East Pergola. Simply let us know. And someone will listen to your story and then give you some suggestions of how you might grow in the future. Well, there are a ton of ways you can get involved in giving here at Fellowship, and the number one way is using your Church Center app. It takes about one minute to set up, and then you can do it digitally, anytime, anywhere, um, with about 10 seconds of work. But there's all different options of ways to give, and you can check those out on the side screens. Yesterday, our entire church family got involved in giving back to our community, and it was so exciting to see that happen. And when you give an offering to Fellowship Church, the offering goes to keep the church running, and functioning, but also it goes out into the community in all these different ways. And ShareFest is just one example of those ways. We adopted as a church 42 projects with homeowners in our community. So cool. And the majority of those homeowners are struggling in some manner. They may be elderly. They may have a disability that prevents them from doing uh, some of the things they might need around the house. And so people came 42 different groups from our church, along with tons of other churches all around our city. They went to these homeowners' houses, did simple things like cleaned yards. Um, there was one group that um, went to the home of an 86-year-old person. I think we have a picture of that particular group. And they, were, they just converged on this home. This woman said that she has been applying for two years. This was her third year, and she finally got adopted. She was thrilled. And these people came, and they replaced her swamp cooler stained her fence and then just did some yard maintenance and she was so excited about it. She actually arm wrestled Pastor Will. Um, she won. He said he let her, but I'm not sure. Like there's no video evidence of, you know, how much effort was used. But this is what sowing seed, giving resources to Fellowship Church does. It causes you to be able to be a part of so many things that are bigger than any one person. And I love ShareFest for that. There was so much good that happened yesterday. And there's so much good every time we pool our resources together for the kingdom of God. Let's pray over the finances of each person in this room as well as the church. God, we know that you have a big vision for our city, that there are all kinds of things that you want to do to reach the hurting and the broken and to preach the good news to the lost. And we pray that as we gather together all of our resources in this offering, that you would use it for just so much good, 
So much good in reaching teenagers and children and, and in getting the gospel out from here every Sunday morning, but also all around our city in different projects. And Lord, we celebrate how you bless and how you multiply. And Lord, as each of us sacrifices, we pray that you would pour out resources into each one of these families represented and that they would have enough and they would know that you are protecting their stuff, you're protecting their money, and you're multiplying it in their midst. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Tons of cool stuff happening around the church. Let's take a look. Next Sunday, our kids' church, that's second through fifth graders, are going to be joining us here in the main service. And they're going to show us what they've been working on back in kids' church. They're going to do a memory verse and a really awesome worship song that they're going to lead us in. It's going to be so much fun. So that's going to happen in both services next Sunday. Invite your grandparents, invite the aunts and uncles, the cousins, to come take pictures of your cute kids. My cute kid's going to be there. My whole family's going to be there. There's room for everyone, so invite all the family to come see our second through fifth graders lead us in worship. As the weather warms up here in Western Colorado, so do our activity groups. And we are so excited about the launch of those activity groups. You can find those under the groups tab on the Church Center app. Now, if you see something in there that you're interested in, feel free to click on it and, and fill out an interest in it. And if you don't see something that you wanna do, consider starting an activity group, whether it's pickleball or hiking or jeeping, whatever it is, there's somebody here at Fellowship that's into the same things you are. So if you don't see what you're looking for, talk to Pastor Will, talk to the Info Center, and consider starting an activity group. We are so excited to announce that Super Kids Conference 2023 registration is live right now. You can find it on the Church Center app under the Events tab, and you can sign up your going into second grade through going into sixth grade student. That's gonna be July 21st to the 23rd. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's gonna have a cost of $75, and that's gonna include a meal for your child, t-shirts, all kinds of fun giveaways, and not to mention, they're gonna meet Jesus in a powerful way that is so special for them. Coming up in April of 2024 is the Fellowship Church trip to Israel. Now, this is gonna be such a special trip. It's gonna be so amazing. You can go with Pastor Tim and Pastor Will and see the Holy Land. So if you wanna sign up for that, go to the Church Center app. It's gonna require a $300 deposit to save your spot. The total cost will include airfare out of Grand Junction, food, lodging, all inclusive on a 10 day trip in Jerusalem, in all the places that we hear about in the Bible and see the places where Jesus walks. So if you're interested in that, go to the Church Center app. We hope you've been enjoying our Chosen series. I know I have. Enjoy the rest of today's service.
ago, Pastor Hooper and myself uh, did a lunch at Chili's. A lot of times we do lunch meetings because we have Baptists in our background, so we have to eat to talk. I don't really understand where that came from, but that's kind of a generational curse. But uh, I digress. So we're talking, and uh, I, we see somebody across the restaurant, and it's somebody that we had worked with in the past. It used to be on our staff, and she's like a sister to me. We had this kind of brother-sister relationship. And uh, I was like, oh, Linda's over there. I, I said, well, we, we need to swing by and, and say hi to her afterwards. He's like, all right, all right. So, so we ate our meal and we finished our meeting. And then we went over and uh, she was the, sitting in a, a booth across from her friend. And I came up and I, the way I would always treat her, I just kind of jumped in the booth with her and scooted her over and put my arm around her and looked her in the face. I said, how are you doing? And in that moment, when she looked at me, I realized that wasn't Linda. I had to make a decision at that point. I had to either own what I had done or I had to come up with something really creative to get me out of the situation. So I chose the latter or attempted to choose the latter. So I looked at her and I go, hey, are you guys enjoying your meal here? I just wanna make sure that, you know, the chilies here in Grand Junction is, you, you know, your food is good. Has your service been really good? And she's like, well, yeah. And I was like, well, I, hey, if you have any problems at all, just let me know, okay? I'll be around, you can tell me. So I just acted like a manager at Chili's. And of course, Pastor Hooper supported me so much, as soon as he realized that it was not her, he ran out of that restaurant. He did not support me at all. I felt super stupid in that moment. I sold it hard. I don't know if she bought it, but in the situation, I realized I messed up. I, I, I messed up. We mess up all the time. And in, in, in situations like that, that's a little mess up, right? It's not that big a deal. It might be a little embarrassing, but you know, I just messed up. But what about more serious mess ups? Times when we mess up that hurts how we, are, how we see ourselves and how we believe God sees us. Now, humans are really good at messing up either way. In Leviticus, though, it actually talks about a guilt offering that was given or an offering that was given for sins that were just accidental sins. It was a mandatory offering that would, were, was to be given to cover that sin, but those were not issues that, that people really, really worried about. They were fine with making sacrifices for those sins because they're accidental. They, they just happen. We, we, commit them, we commit them ignorantly. But how about the ones that are tougher to swallow? The sins that we commit over and over and over again that we know are wrong, but we do them anyway. Now, the devil loves to tempt us with those same old sins because he knows that he can get us to feel guilty about those more easily. We might not feel guilty about one that we just do accidentally, but we kind of welcome the guilt, don't we, with those that we commit over and over again, almost like a penance, almost like I have to feel guilty for so long for this sin because it was this bad. And I want you to listen to this. Shame lives in the repetitive sins in our life. Shame lives there. Guilt and shame robs us of our strength, our boldness, our confidence, our joy, and our ability to cope. It weighs us down and defeats us for the fight. It, but it really defeats us before the fight. It defeats us before we even get to the fight. Now, what is the fight? Well, the fight is handling attacks from the enemy against our ability to walk with Jesus effectively. Now, Scripture warns about these attacks. It says it's going to happen. And it, it talks about specifically in Ephesians chapter 6 that because these attacks are coming, that we need to make sure we arm ourselves on a daily basis. That we teach this in spiritual warfare. We talk about the fact that there are things that we need to put on literally, but also spiritually on a daily basis. So we put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We pick up the sword of the spirit. We put on the, the belt of truth and the shoes of peace. But in verse 16, it gets super specific about one of the things that we need to put on and what it does. It says, in addition to all these, all of those other uh, ways that we defend ourselves, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. That's how it's described. When he hits us, it's like a fiery arrow. 
And he is going to take shots at us. And he knows exactly what to shoot, doesn't he? He knows exactly what to shoot. And he's going to shoot you with something so specific to what will affect you the most that he might not shoot somebody else with the same arrow because it won't affect them in the same way. But it'll affect us. Now, there are a few things that the, love, the devil just loves to do to, to, to us. He loves to. And here's a couple of shots that he loves to take. The first of which is that the devil wants to make your old life look attractive again. He wants to do that. He's really good at it. You see, the devil wants us to forget that we have been redeemed. Redeemed, that's a fancy word. Maybe you've heard it before. Maybe you don't really understand what it means. But redemption means that Jesus, Jesus through the cross, bought us out of the slavery of sin. So scripture says we were once a slave to sin, but when Jesus died on the cross, he was the final sacrifice and that purchased us back. We were bought out of slavery. First Peter 1, 18 through 19 says, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So he didn't do it with riches. He didn't do it with gold or silver or property or, or, or livestock. He did it with his own blood. He sacrificed himself as the final payment for us. And the devil wants us to forget that we are free. He wants us to forget that. Most of us don't walk around with the attitude of, I'm free. I'm free. I've been bought back. I don't have to sweat sin. I don't have to worry about my future. I was bought back by Jesus and his sacrifice. I am not gonna allow the devil to influence me. Now, how does the devil make our old life look good to us? He's so good at it. And he does the same thing to all of us. Now, if you were in spiritual warfare, you'll, th this part of the, the teaching is a little redundant, but you'll remember that we talk about that the devil will put on different hats when he messes with us. He'll put on the first hat, which is the hat of the tempter. The hat of the tempter. James 1, 13 through 15 says, And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, or he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Where does sin give birth to? at what location in our minds right that's where it starts it starts in our head we have some thought and then that thought grows and then that thought turns into sin and as scripture says it actually drags us away have you ever felt like sin has drugged you away before yeah all of us have felt that way some of us have felt that way within the last 24 hours it's really good at dragging us away he starts with our thoughts to get us to fail. So he loves to put on that tempter hat. And then after he puts that tempter hat on, then he puts the promoter hat on. He promotes it. The devil is so good at this. He's so good at making sin look good. He says things in our mind like, this will be so much fun. It will make you feel so good. It will be so satisfying. And after all, you deserve it. And no one is going to get hurt, and no one will ever find out. Have you ever heard those words before? Absolutely you have. We all have. The devil is so good at what he does, he doesn't really have to be creative. He uses the same thing against all of us. And if we're not careful, we'll let it work. We've all fallen into the trap before. Now, I don't know how many of you, and I just kind of wanted to poll you. How many of you have started the series, The Chosen? You started watching that. Okay, large majority of you. How many of you have finished it? 
Oh, wow, good job. Well, if you haven't started watching it, I really, really recommend that you do. It is a series that's on TV and you can get it on Prime or Netflix. If you wanna watch season three, you need to either go to angel.com or, or download the chosen app. But it is a look at Jesus and the life of the disciples and those that he influenced. And, and they really, really do a wonderful job with this. Knowing, though, that as you watch it, you need to make sure that what you're watching is a, a passage in the, in the film that's scriptural, or is it something that is, has a scriptural uh, uh, a preference, or, or basically a, it's scriptural in, um, in how it's presented, but it's not necessarily written in the Word of God. Well, this morning, this was one of my favorite clips. And I think when you start thinking over the three seasons, you have your favorite clips, right? The, the ones that minister to you the most, the ones where you cried the hardest, right? You, you don't want to watch that show without some Kleenex close. And guys, you can fake it. You know, you can act like you're not crying. Just kind of put your head up, like a uh, hand up if you need to. But we know you're crying too. You're, you're crying because it, so, it is so sweet, these stories. And so one of my favorites is a clip with Mary Magdalene. And the, the scriptural part of Mary's story was that she was delivered from some demons literal demons, demonic possession. Now, possession is different than what we talk about mostly in spiritual warfare. What we talk about in spiritual warfare is the demonic attack, to, attack against those of us that are saved. Mary wasn't saved. And so she was possessed and she was delivered by Jesus. Now, if you've ever gone through deliverance and you have been delivered from something, you're super appreciative. You're like, oh, Jesus, thank you. Like, thank you for getting this out of my life. Thank you for dealing with this addiction. Thank you for dealing with this hurt. And, and it's, it's a major lift off of us. And so we're so grateful to Jesus. And, and so was Mary. Mary was plagued with this demon for years and she was delivered by Jesus. Now, fast forward the story a little bit later. This is part of the story that we don't know is true but could have happened, but it has very much scriptural uh, uh, emphasis and it's doctrinally sound. And she messes up and she decides to go away from her brothers, these disciples that have become her friends. And the devil has allowed things to look attractive again to her. And she goes down the wrong path. And then Matthew and Peter are sent to find her. Mary can obviously take care of herself. You can't. What if you were cut off from Jesus by something in your past? Wouldn't you want help getting back to him as soon as possible? Mary. I thought I was dreaming you. Can you walk? I'm not going anywhere. We have to go back. No, I can't. Come on, Mary. He told us to come for no. you. No, <laughs> no. He already fixed me once. And I broke again. I can't face him. to say. I don't require much. I'm so ashamed. You redeemed me and I just threw it all away. Well, that's not much of a redemption if it can be lost in a day, is it? <laughs> I owe you everything. But I just don't think I can do it. Do what? Live up to it. Repay you. How could I leave? How could I go back to 
to the place I was, and I didn't even... I didn't even come back on my own. They had to come get me. <sighs> I just can't live up to it. Well, that's true. <laughs> but you don't have to. I just want your heart. A father just wants your heart. Give us that, which you already have. And the rest will come in time. Did you really think that you'd never struggle or sin again? I know how painful that moment was for you. I shouldn't. Someday. But not here. I'm just so sorry. Look up. I can't. You can. Look at me. I forgive you. It's over. So we've all been down that road. You know, we've all felt so guilty or shameful that we didn't think that we could come back. But what I love about Jesus is that he's always there to welcome you. I also love that about Fellowship Church. Now, I grew up in my denomination of Baptist Church when I was growing up was actually called Judgmental Baptist. Uh, And when you walked in, you automatically felt judged. But here's, it's different. We'll always be a church for those that are coming back. And I know the hearts of you in our church that will always give up a seat for those that have been hurting. You'll always give up a seat for somebody that has walked away for a period of time. And when they come back, I see you in the lobbies welcoming those people with open arms. For most of us, we've been a prodigal at one time in our life. We've either run away from the Lord on our own uh, choice or, or maybe we didn't come back to the Lord because of the hurt that we've been through. But Jesus is the Redeemer. And he built the church for us to be Jesus or the Holy Spirit with skin on. We are supposed to minister from the Holy Spirit to each other and lift each other up and bring each other back into the fold. So we know that he's gonna make sin look attractive to you again. He's gonna make that old life look attractive to you. He's either gonna do that through old friendships that come back in your life or seeing something that triggers something. In this particular clip, Mary was triggered by some things that she saw that led her down the wrong path. But he's not only gonna make us our sin look attractive to us, he's also going to make sure that he keeps us from our Redeemer. That's the second thing he wants to do. He wants to keep us from our Redeemer. And he does this by putting his third hat on in this whole process. And that's the hat of the, of the accuser. So you've been tempted. The promoter has promoted the sin and made it look so good that we take a bite. We decide, okay, I'm going to go down that road. And as soon as we commit that sin, then this third hat of the accuser comes on the enemy and he loves to beat us up with the lie that he just sold us on. He says things to us like, you loser, you're so weak. You keep making the same poor choice over and over again. He says things like, if people knew this about you, they, they wouldn't respect you. They wouldn't like you. They, they wouldn't wanna hang out with you. And then he asks us the question, don't you think God gets sick of forgiving you for the same sin over and over and over again? Don't go to church. Don't be a hypocrite. How could you ever serve God with this issue in your life? He doesn't want you anyway. Now those words sound familiar too. Because he speaks those things in our mind. 
He loves to keep us away from our Redeemer. He loves to, loves to make us feel guilt and shame. Now, Satan loves to use lies and deception because he's the father of lies, condemnation and accusation, making us feel bad for a sin we've already asked for forgiveness for. You know, that's how to tell the difference between conviction and guilt. When you sin, conviction makes you go, oh, I'm sorry, Jesus, forgive me. Guilt enters as this counterfeit emotion to, to, uh, to conviction and it moves in right after and it makes you feel bad about the sin that Jesus has already washed away. He loves to do that. He loves to defeat us in that way. And then he loves to use doubt, unbelief, and fear. And that's his MO. And he does it super well. And he has an army of demons to help him feel, make us feel these, these things. But have you ever wondered when you are running from the Lord, what God would say to you? If you were really, really just messing up and you were heading down the, the, the wrong path, maybe down that same old sin that, that you've, you've committed over and over again, or, or maybe you're just running from, from, from hurt, unbelief, fear, whatever it is, what would he sing over you in that moment? What would be the words that he would say to those lost sheep that he loves?
so many times we're running from the Lord because we think that he's going to judge us or he's mad at us. But the truth is he's, he's, dis, he's deployed troops on our behalf. He sent out an army to come after us. And this army speaks words of encouragement opposite of what the devil has been told, telling you for your whole life. And they're saying to you, no, you're worthy. Come back. Jesus loves you. The church loves you. You need us. Come back. Now, maybe you're in this room this morning and, and you were in that state of, man, I've just messed up so much and I just don't know if I could ever serve or I just don't know if I fit in here because, you know, I, I just make so many mistakes. The Holy Spirit is telling you right now, no, 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 no. You're exactly where you should be. For those of you that are watching online, maybe you have avoided coming in to church or, 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 or a church building even because you don't feel worthy. But the Holy Spirit is calling you back. He loves you. He loves you exactly the way you are. You don't have to change uh, anything. Of course, there's always things that we can strive better to do in our life. But Jesus loves you where you are. He accepts you where you are. And then there's those of us that have prodigals that are running right now. Right? They're, they're running and guilt and shame is driving them. And we want them back. Ask the father to deploy his army on behalf of that loved one. God, send your army for our kids. Send your army for those family members that we love. Send your army for those friends that we had not seen in, in a long time. They've just gotten knocked out by fiery arrows. The devil loves to use deception. He loves to use lies. But the scripture will always tell us the truth. Romans 8.1 says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for us. Stop feeling guilty. When we feel guilty, we're saying, well, Jesus' sacrifice must not mean much because we're going to hold on to guilt instead of holding on to the redemption. We're in a different category as Christians when it comes to condemnation. We don't have any anymore. And because you belong to him, verse two says, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. We're free. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So that old, those old rules of do's and don'ts, that didn't work. We needed a redeemer. The law of Moses wasn't able to save us, so God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body, like the bodies we sinners have, and in that body, God declared an end to the sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He put an end to it. He did this so that the just requirements of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. So would you stand with me as we close this morning and let's do some warfare together, shall we? First of all, I want you to think of that prodigal that's running. And let's pray for them as a church family. Lord, for our sons and daughters, for our friends, for our family members. I pray in Jesus' name for those that are prodigals that are running from you right now. Dispatch your army for them. Send your angels after them. In Jesus' name, make the devil lose interest in them. Break them no matter what the earthly cost, God, because time is short. Oh, and bring them back. Bind the spirit of lies and deception in them to where they would feel like nobody would welcome them. Holy Spirit, 
do something within them that we can't do. We tried, oh, have we tried. But in our own efforts, we can't do it. So Holy Spirit, we pray miraculously that you would. And then when they come back and they come back to whatever church that they're gonna go to, that they would feel such love and acceptance. They would feel so built up. They would see you with skin on it. Christians that would come around them and give them what they need. Or you give them what they need through those people. And now for ourselves. First of all, just forgive us of our sins. If there's anything you need to ask for forgiveness for, just ask him to do that right now. Holy Spirit, reveal what that is that we need to ask for forgiveness for. Forgiveness, forgive us for wrong thoughts. Forgive us for evil desires. Forgive us for allowing ourselves to be drug away and enticed. Forgive us for falling for the same game plan over and over again of the enemy. Forgive us for that. Now, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I pray that your spirit of freedom would be loosed into us. Whether we're in this room or we're watching online, Holy Spirit, move in us that we would know we are free. And in Jesus' name, bind the spirit of guilt and condemnation and get it out of our lives in Jesus' name. We speak to you, guilt and shame, with the authority of Jesus of Nazareth. And we say, you are outcast from us in Jesus' name. And loosen us, Holy Spirit, grace and freedom. And I pray, Lord God, that anytime we mess up, we'll be quick to say we're sorry. That, that when we feel that guilt and shame come back on us, we would remember how to fight. We would recognize that it's just a fiery arrow. It's coming at us. So in Jesus' name, we bind that spirit of guilt and shame and we cast it out of our lives in Jesus' name. I do that every day. <laughs> I have to. And I pray, Holy Spirit, then that you would lose joy and contentment in us. Lose joy and contentment in this realm. You redeemed us once and for all. You love us. Nothing's gonna change that. Help us to be able to walk in freedom and in truth. Help us to walk, Lord, manifesting your fruits and your gifts and help Fellowship Church to always be a place that will welcome people home, that will welcome people that are running, that are welcome people that are broken. We can empathize, we've all been there. We love you, God. Thank you for buying us back. You, you gave your life to do that. Helps to never forget that. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening to this week's message at Fellowship Church. If you have not made Christ your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. The Bible says in the book of Romans, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And you can do this right now. I just want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are Lord, that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you rose again. And God, I thank you for that. I ask you now to be my savior, to guide my life, and to give me a home forever in heaven. And God, I ask you this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. If you just prayed this prayer for the first time, we would love to celebrate with you. Please text us at heaven and 94,000 to get in contact with one of our staff where we can answer any questions that you may have.
Also, if you're in need of prayer, we would love to support you. You could submit your prayer requests by texting prayer support to 94000 as well. Our prayer team will receive your request and immediately start covering you. If this was your first time experiencing Fellowship Church, or if you want to learn more about one of our many ministries, you can text Fellowship to 94000 to connect with our staff. As always, we are still just a phone call away. You can contact us at 970-245-PRAY with any questions. Thanks again. We hope to see you next week in person or online.